Good morning, everyone. I'd like to um, start by thanking Hori San and Globus for hosting this event this morning. I'd like to thank our distinguished panelists for joining us today on what I hope will be a lively discussion. And I'd like to thank all of you for braving the weather to come out and discuss the state of trust in Japan. This is the um, 12th year we've done the trust barometer. And we do it in 25 countries globally. We look at opinion leaders as well as a general population sample. And this is the first time we've looked at general population. Um, we started this a decade ago because we wanted to understand the relative level of trust in business versus government versus non-governmental organizations, <clears throat> and versus the media. Because we wanted to understand how business in particular, and increasingly government, needed to manage relationships with civil society to pursue an agenda of economic growth. So the state of trust this year um, is fragile, n not only in Japan, but globally. In the 12 years that we've been doing this study, we saw the most dramatic single year decline in trust in government that we've ever seen. So one of the themes I'm gonna talk about today as we go through the presentation is what I call the democratization of authority where we're seeing traditional authority figures decrease in credibility, and peers, your peer group, and technical experts rise in terms of credibility and authority and trust. Every year when the trust barometer comes out, the first thing I look at is what I call a trust index. So I take the average scores for each institution in each country, add them together, and divide by four. And that gives me a general feeling. If the number's above, say, 50, we're in net truster territory. And if it's below 50, we're in distrust territory. So the first thing I look to is where I see trends. And I see a big trend here in terms of the growth of the number of markets which are in net distruster territory. And that's across all institutions of civil society. And if we look at Japan, last year Japan was at a 51% index score, which is in neutral territory, neither trusting nor distrusting. We saw a big move down for Japan this year, not surprisingly because of your March 11th, the impact of post-March 11th, as well as um, a couple well-known or well-documented corporate cases, Olympus comes to mind. And to, to give you a, another sense, we have Spain in your neighborhood of distrust, another market that went from essentially neutral to distrust. But in Spain, we have 23% unemployment. And we have youth unemployment of 45%, just to give you a comparison of their domestic and economic situation versus yours. Um, I think the other thing I look at when I think about the big drop in trust, the trust index for Japan is only 10% of all the respondents of our Japanese poll feel the country is on the right path. So you've gone from net neutral on trust index to net distruster of the four institutions we measure, and only 10% of your general population respondents feel the country is on the right track which is 25th out of the 25 countries that we measure. But the news will get better, I, I promise. Now, we actually used Japan as a case study this year of what can happen when trust in institutions has been significantly damaged. And if you think about what happened coming out of March 11th in terms of the response of business or the utility the response of government and the kind of slowness um, of responding from the local media as opposed to the 
um, sensationalized response from foreign media. And, and we see, I think, in, uh, the results of that here. Trust in government dropped 26 percent. Trust in NGOs down 21 percent. And I'll come back to that NGO figure. Trust in media down 12 percent. Trust in business down slightly, but from net truster to net distruster. The most interesting thing for me here is trust in the energy sector down 46 percent. Trust in banks down 20. So you have economic issues, and you've got, obviously, energy and transparency issues related to both of these industries. We also have a huge drop, down 55% in trust in a government official as a spokesperson, from 63% to 8% trust. That's the lowest figure we've ever seen for trust for spokesperson credibility. Now, when we look at this globally, just so we can, I'll go back and forth between global data and Japan data. When we look at this globally, three of the four institutions globally were down in the last 12 months. So we saw NGOs decline. We saw um, business decline. We saw government, again, the single largest one-year dip we've ever seen. Media, uh, and we saw business statistically flat. So business actually fared well. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well as we go on. When we look at the Japan results, all institutions had a dramatic decline. However, business is still, or is now, the most trusted institution, again, as it was last year, but on steep declines across the board. And again, I call your attention to trust in government being at 28%. And when I talk about trust in an institution, specifically what we ask here is, how much do you trust each institution to do what is right. So it's a, a general reflection of trust in that institution. So we're seeing a pretty skeptical or cynical audience in Japan when it comes to the general population views of Japanese institutions. When you look at trust in government, so we had a big decline here, as well as a lot of other markets, what I do when I look at the global comparisons, we have trust in government in Japan here, 51% down to 25. I just look at this red line here, and I look at how many countries are in net truster territory above the red line, and how many are in net distruster below. So you're not alone in terms of lack of trust in government, just to kind of paint that picture for you. Then when I look at trust in business globally, again, your trust in business is roughly neutral. But I draw this line across, and I look at countries above the line and countries below, and I see business really starting to get a little bit of space between itself and government in terms of trust in the institution, which we're starting to interpret as a call for more technical expertise and trust and technical expertise when we look to the functional parts of the economy globally versus trust in government policy when we look to the functional parts of the economy. When I look at trust in industry, so if we think about trust in business in the country down but still in net neutral territory, then I start to look at trust in specific industries, I see something interesting in the Japan data. So I talked already about the big drop in energy from second most trusted at 75% trust to least trusted of the institutions we measure at 29%. What's interesting for me here is everywhere in the world, every country, 24 out of 25, technology is the most trusted uh, industry. But in Japan, we see a nice move up for automotive, only two percentage points. But in the rankings, it jumps up three spaces to the most trusted institution which I think is a nice point to recovery of your automotive industry and some pride in your automotive um, industry as well. Now, media is the only institution 
globally to rise. In Japan, however, like other institutions, you had a drop. So roughly one third of our respondents trust media. But again, I put this line across here, and I look at where media is trusted and where media is not trusted. We tend to have high levels of trust in media in emerging markets, China, Mexico, Indonesia, and India. We saw a big bump up. In general, we see to see, tend to see higher trust in media in rapid growth economies. Because in general, we tend to think there's slightly better news coming out of media, as well as in a lot of the, media, a lot of the markets that reg register high trust in media, they're in controlled media environments, where there may be some government ownership of media. So a lot of times, government and media trust scores are linked in rapid growth economies. So as long as the economy is growing, we tend to see higher levels of trust in government and higher levels of trust in media. Um, I expect that over time, those emerging market or rapid growth economy scores will come down and be more um, comparable to developed economies. When we look at the, the Japan data on media, and, and this is interesting to me, when I look at all sources of media um, in the country have come down. So our trust in our traditional newspapers has dropped. Trust in online sources has dropped. Trust in social media has dropped and trust in corporate sources of information. So think about that as your dot-com properties have all, all gone down. I think this is temporary. I think this is a reaction to what's happened post-March 11th. I think these will bounce back up much more quickly than the trust in government numbers will bounce back up. Um, I think this is just a reaction to general cynicism in the Japanese sample more so than anything endemic in the media. Um, although I'm sure that will come up in the panel discussion um, quite aggressively. Um, NGOs are still the most trusted institution globally. We saw a drop here in Japan in the last 12 months. And, and this may seem counterintuitive. However, usually when you have a natural disaster, there's a great call for transparency and accountability of NGOs, that people in the markets that are affected want to know that the money that was given to NGOs or the supplies that were given to NGOs get into the hands of the people who, who need it the most. So post-tsunami in Southeast Asia, we saw a huge one-year dip in trust in NGOs. And I think this, to me, is the same trend that we haven't had quick enough transparency or quick enough reporting back on where the money and the goods that were donated to help disaster relief, how those got into the hands of the people that need it. I would expect trust in NGOs, unless there are major issues, to bounce back pretty rapidly as well with media here. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the business and government, government dynamic and trust. Usually, trust in business and trust in government move in the same direction. So trust in government up, trust in media up. And a lot of times, that is linked to the economy and economic growth. So I want to talk through a little bit of a hypothesis here and what we see. So if you remember, trust in government did a big move down nationally. Trust in business was down, but not as markedly. Even so, I just want you to think about the gap we have between business meeting the public's expectations in Japan, and then on the next slide I'm going to show you government's performance versus expectation. So the light blue line is the expectation of our Japanese respondents for business performance on taking responsible actions to address an issue or a crisis. So the things down the left are rank order from what's most important to our Japanese respondents in the last 12 months to what's least important. So if we look at Japanese business performance against expectation, big gaps, 11% versus 61, 7 versus 58. And if you look at what the drivers are or what the expectations are, we have taking responsible actions to address an issue or a crisis, being transparent, treating employees well, 
listening to customer needs. We're starting to see what I would call softer values-based expectations of business versus harder core competency-based expectations of business rise to the top in importance, and our gaps for performance are pretty significant. However, the gaps between business performance and the gaps between government performance are stronger for business. So business is performing better than expectation versus government's performance versus expectation. Business more trusted than government is. And again, if you look at the expectations, most important expectations, you see transparency come up again with government, top. Communicates frequently and honestly, so I could also make an argument that that's related to transparency. Listens to citizens' needs and feedback. So the top three here, expectations again, or what I would call more transparency-based and value-based, societal-based drivers versus necessarily core competency, economic-driven drivers of government. So coming out of crisis, we're seeing what I would suggest is a more a higher expectation for values-based behaviors versus traditional core competency-based behaviors. We want to see engagement, greater engagement, greater transparency, and quicker action to address issues coming out of March 11th. The other interesting thing for me is, here's the Japan results. We asked um, our respondents, do you believe that government or business will mislead you in communicating with you? And I, I think it's interesting that even though trust dropped dramatically in Japan and all institutions, we still actually don't think that business is going to mislead us. Only 11% of our respondents felt business would actively mislead them. So I'm going to be optimistic and say that's only 1 in 10. And when you compare that to other markets, it's not so bad. However, 34% of us think the government is going to actively mislead us. So still under 50%, but three times greater than the expectation that business will mislead us. So trust in government down. Business basically flat, so there's an opportunity there. Ex performance versus expectation for business versus government, business better. And our expectation that business is going to mislead us is less than our expectation that government's going to mislead us. So we start to see a little bit of opportunity here for business to start to lead in what I would call policy-driven discussions. Now, even though we're not trusting the government, we still a third of our respondents here, would like to see some stronger regulations around business. In particular, when those regulations relate to things that are going to protect consumers and regulate business activities against responsible behaviors. So think about supply chain, think about community relations, think about taking care of your employees, labor, those kinds of things. So contextually, we have this relationship between business and government that tends to move together. In Japan now, we have a pretty significant gap between trust in business and trust in government. Therefore, I think, in Japan in particular, that there, from the general public sample, there's a desire to see one institution start to lead some forward progress in Japan, both in terms of some social repair and in terms of some economic progress. So if, if I look at kind of what happens on a global basis, so I'm going to make a general global observation here, that when the economic crisis driven by my country's uh, mortgage issues in 2008 kind of drug the global economy down, there was a very low trust in both business and CEOs. And as a reaction to that, there was a real call for increased regulation. So whilst the governments globally responded with increased regulation, they didn't do a very good job of implementing that regulation. So we had big fights between opposition, both in Western Europe and the United States, about trying to get those regulations through. Therefore, we've seen very little movement 
on the regulatory front, and we're starting to see now an expectation from general population respondents and opinion leader respondents to want to see business to self-regulate or to start to drive the policy decisions and discussions, again, themselves, starting to lead government. And I think that's because most of our respondents see business as being a little bit more agile, a little bit more quicker to act versus governments who are kind of stuck in, in between battles and parliaments to move the agendas forward. So I actually think this starts to give business an opportunity to lead, but to take advantage of that opportunity to lead, there's an expectation that business is gonna have to start performing on the drivers of trust a little bit differently. And, and what this slide says is, this is the rank importance of, this is the, these are the most important drivers of trust in business in Japan. So this is the number one, that's number 16, in rank order. And what, that's no good. Ah, there we go. Um, trust in electronics. Um, <laughs> um, I want to call your attention to two things here. The first thing is the difference between the green and the blue. The green are what we call social drivers or societal drivers of trust. Takes actions to address an issue or a crisis. That's been a bit of, of a theme in your country. Listens to customer needs and feedback. Treats employees well. Broadly addresses society needs. So things that are what I would call more traditionally soft drivers of power versus operational drivers of trust which tend to be a little bit more core competency based. So Japanese business is performing very well, it performs best on the least important driver of trust. So if business wants to take the mantle of leadership, and I believe it can, business needs to start to change the dialogue it's having with its stakeholders. It needs to start engaging stakeholders on what's important to the stakeholder. Trust, yes. <laughs> It needs to start engaging um, its stakeholders in the things that are most important to those stakeholders, which is just an inverted pyramid versus what we have. And it also needs to start addressing those stakeholders, not necessarily directly, but with what I would call this democratization of authority in mind. So the most trusted spokespeople about business, a technical expert within the company not the CEO. Trust in the CEO is down, although still you know, third on this list here, or I guess statistically kind of fourth on the list. CEOs have dropped what we're expecting and what our general population and opinion leaders are both expecting, that they want business to engage. They want business to engage on more socially driven issues than what I would call operationally driven issues. And they want business to engage with multiple sources, using a technical expert. So think about white coats instead of suit coats. Start to think of academic or third party experts engaging on behalf of business versus the business itself doing it on down. So again, at the bottom of the list here, we don't want to engage government in communicating about business, not so good, but we do want some third parties here. And we also see a person like myself, so peer to peer, being very important. Okay, I'm gonna finish up. Not only, do we have to start to communicate on social drivers versus operational drivers? We want to start to use technical experts and third parties versus C-suite executives. We also need to start talking to our stakeholders frequently because there's high skepticism. Respondents in Japan need to hear things three to five times. 82% of our respondents say they need to hear things three to five times about business before they believe it. So multiple sources, multiple channels, transparency and engagement. And before I kick back over to a panel discussion, I would just kind of leave you with a few thoughts that I think there is a real need here to start to get back to some basics and communicating about our values as an organization, as a government and as business. And to start to use values to back up and support decisions we're making and actions we're taking. I think we need to start to rec recognize that operational or core competency-driven factors are the basic cost 
of trust. If you want to build future trusted relationships, we need to start engaging on the more societal driven drivers of trust. I would also suggest that there's a real need to start to exercise what I would call radical transparency in the market because you have a very cynical population base now that coming out of March the 11th needs to hear things multiple times from multiple sources, needs to hear them relatively quickly before they're going to start believe them. And finally, I think there's an opportunity again for business here versus government to start to shape the, the discourse or the dialogue on these issues. And I, there's an opportunity to start to use technical competency of business to drive discussions about recovery and about policy. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. And now we'll get into group discussion and give you a chance to, to interact with our panelists. So thank you very much.